guys welcome back to my channel today I'm going to be doing another book to movie adaptation and this time I'm going to be doing Fifty Shades of Grey. Let me start off by saying I did read this book. I have read all three of them. I read them a couple summers ago. It was when the initial wave of Fifty Shades of Grey madness broke out. I read them purely because Everyone talked about them, so I, naturally being the very curious person that I am, needed to know what it was about. I actually hated these books. Hated them so very much. I actually can't think of a single thing that I liked about them. I know it's Twilight fan fiction. I knew it was Twilight fan fiction when I initially read it. However, reading this book, I never once could like connect how they were similar. I didn't pick up on any of the Twilight references in the book. I wasn't looking for them, granted. I didn't think it to be super obvious. I'll get to the movie about that in just a minute. I thought that the writing was really subpar. I was annoyed by the fact that this is technically erotica and she wouldn't, the author wouldn't use terms to describe things like accurately. She used phrases like down there and child, very childish phrases in a, in like essentially a rated R book. That drove me nuts. The like inner goddess crap drove me nuts. I couldn't stand Anna. I hated her. I thought she was an idiot. I thought she was so stupid. I thought that she was just like the most naive person to have ever existed on the planet. I was reading this book outside. I don't remember them being this long. Oh look I'm losing pages. Oh I actually oh oh my goodness. What? What? My book is literally falling apart like right now. What the heck? My book is falling apart. Maybe it's falling apart because as I was saying I was reading this book outside and I threw it across my patio. I just chucked it. I was so annoyed. I don't even remember what part I was reading about. And then you go, well, Jordan, if you were so annoyed with the first book, why did you read the other two? Because I was dumbfounded how there could be three of these. Well, what happens that makes this a trilogy? Not much. If you're curious about this series, just go watch the movie. There's actually this wonderful review on Goodreads. I will link it down below. I went to go see the movie because reading the book I knew what it was about, I knew what was in it, and I was like how on earth are they going to make this appropriate to show in theaters? How is this not gonna be essentially an adult film? My best friend and I went to go see it together. She really actually enjoyed it. She hasn't read the book so that was I definitely saw the Twilight references in the movie much more clearly than I did in the book. I could pick them out a whole lot easier. I thought they did, that they did a really good job transferring what was in the book into the movie. I mean, they did leave out some certain, you know, scenes because there are just some things in this book that you just can't put in a in a movie theater. I thought they did a really good job with the with the movie. I thought it was just as cheesy and just as corny as this book. There were scenes where they were being completely serious in the movie, and it was a completely like dramatic scene and I'm giggling and my friend is like what is so funny I just can't even take these people seriously who says that no one says that people don't do that what is going on there were just some scenes in the sh in the movie just like in the book where I was just dying in laughter because it was so ridiculous some of the lines were just so so cheesy I couldn't take the book seriously I'm trying to think of you know, or any other non spoilery things. Spoilery things. I have a hard time with that word that I want to say. The movie was was better than the book. Don't waste your time on the book. Just go see the movie. You get to bypass all of the really terrible writing. Those of you who haven't read the book or seen the movie, um, I would leave and go do that. Or you can stay if you don't ever plan to see this book or this movie. See this book. Read this book or see this movie. You can stay and we can chat. Okay, let's go put this down. I'm just such a hand person when I talk that it's hard for me to hold something. So, the movie. Well, they live in Forks. Even though it takes place in Portland, Twilight was filmed in Portland. 
it looked just like the Twilight movies, I was like, she basically is going, basically lives in, lives in Forks and is wearing like really frumpy clothing, just like Bella. She's not really interested in fashion, just like Bella. And a lot of people were saying that her roommate Kate was Rosalie. I didn't get that. Had I not heard that from someone else, I would never have put that together. I don't see how Rosalie and Kate are like the same because I don't remember Rosalie and Bella being very close throughout the stories. I totally see the whole like Edward and Christian connection. I see the whole like masochism thing. Dakota Johnson did a really good job I think capturing the true essence of Bella. I think that Dakota Johnson was a better Bella than Kristen Stewart was. Book Bella is very weird. Like she has like wit and a little bit of humor and she just has a personality whereas movie Bella is just like so emotionless. Let's be real. I just I don't like Kristen Stewart. But I think that Dakota Johnson really played the like humor that Bella has so much better. And the scene in the bar was hysterical and come here, go away, come back, no leave me alone. And then she vomits on him. The scene the next morning where she's like freaking out because she thinks they did something. And he's like, I have morals. Like I don't, necrophilia is not my thing. Because <laughs> he has a thing. It's just not, oh my god, I thought that was so, that was so funny. The grilled cheese sandwich part. Like crawling on the bed and he takes a bite of her sandwich. It was so freaking funny. I was giggling and my friend was like, quit it. You're ruining the movie. I'm like, what ambiance? Just freaking took a huge bite out of her sandwich. They're like, dude, do not eat my sandwich. And Kate steals her sandwich. What is with people stealing Anna's sandwiches? She needs to stand up for herself more. She needs to put her foot down. It's like, don't you be eating my sandwich. Anyway, I think I got a little off topic. I do agree though that the first like 40 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes of that movie was straight Twilight. I see the Twilight connection completely. The car that, that she drives, absolutely Bella's car. She works in a freaking hardware store. I do not remember that from the book at all. Bella works in a hardware store. That blonde guy, her co-worker, whatever his name was, Mike Newton. You know, Christian comes in. Anna, Anna, do you need help? Do you need help? Oh my god. When Christian comes into the store, I need cable ties. And I know what he needs it for. The audience knows what it needs, what he needs it for. You're doing a lot of home projects. You're just so handy. Oh my god, it was so funny. That was that was so funny. And the scene where he just appears in her house, totally an Edward move. Sneak into her bedroom at night and watch her sleep. I would be concerned if some man that I don't know very well just busts into my house and is waiting for me. And she's not really really concerned. I was confused. I remember thinking. Anna works out. Bella doesn't work out. Let's talk about the scene where they meet. Most awkward thing ever. And she trips over absolutely nothing. I did like though. I did like that every uh, every um, employee in his office had blonde hair. I liked that they included that detail from the book. It's very important that they did that because it's such an important part of who Christian is. In the book it is very very clear that he does not like to be touched. Not like in the in the movie, Anna touched him a lot. Also, halfway through the movie, I'm finding myself like rifling through my purse to get my chapstick. I'm not even thinking about it. Every time Anna licks her lips, bites her lips, I do it. My lips were so chapped by the end of the movie because I kept licking them. Why does she keep wearing those fugly genie shoes? <laughs> like she wrapped her feet in duct tape. Why is she wearing these hideous, ugly black duct tape shoes. Like, Christian has all this money in the world and he can't buy her a nice pair of shoes. Speaking of Christian buying her things, he buys her a laptop. Anna's is broken. Bella has this ancient old dinosaur computer. And then he buys her a car and she's like, that's a car. He's like, you're so absurd. <laughs> Bella gets a new car. Bella gets a lot of gifts. And Anna gets a lot of very outlandish gifts from, from Christian. He's buying her a car and a laptop. Why can't he buy her a phone? That's not from like 2007. She's a flip phone. Who the frick has flip phones anymore? Even though I don't think that Kate is like a good, ro like a Rosalie comparative, I can see how Kate and Elliot are a good 
Rosalie and Emmett comparative. His sister, uh, Mia, who comes from Paris, Rita Ora, she did have on a wig that was very much like an Alice haircut. They tried really hard to be like, hey, this is Alice. So I think I should probably also address the biggest part about this movie, the BDSM. I wasn't ever really bothered by that being in the book. I never thought that Christian was going to hurt her. How do I, I don't even know how I want to explain. That wasn't what made me dislike him. I w disliked him because of his reasons for the BDSM. That was what always bothered me about the books, is why he was into BDSM. Not the whole, his mom's friend introduced it to him when he was 15 spiel. And the whole fact that people wanted to be with a man like Christian, like so like lustful of him. Like, I remember everyone being like, oh my gosh, I love Christian. I want to, he's so hot. He, I want a guy like Christian. He's abusive. He needs to be seen by a psychiatrist. Like he has some serious issues that need help. Like, I don't think he's a good person. The way that Anna like justifies why he does things really annoys me. But I was really annoyed by Anna's like passiveness. She doesn't really stand up for herself in a lot of aspects of their relationship. When he's gone too far, she'll say something. But it's not until he gets to that point of going too far that she puts her foot down. Every step up to that where she could have said something, she doesn't usually say something. She would just kind of like hold it back until she got to that point where it was her breaking point. He's very controlling. He's very demanding. He's very protective. He's very possessive of her. That was what really annoyed me about the book was that people wanted a man like Christian. Some people see it as a story where she, I don't really think she changes him though. Some people look at it and think, oh, you know, he's been this way his whole life and he finally meets a girl where she changes who he is and shows him that it's not, he doesn't need to live this life and blah, 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 blah. But I don't think she actually ever changes him because in the end, he's, they're still doing BDSM, still into the BDSM. Like never goes away. It's just part of who he is. I don't know. I just don't think their relationship is healthy. I was really annoyed by it and annoyed by the fact that people found Christian so desirable because I think he's a terrible person and I just, I don't like him. I just don't. I don't think he has any really redeeming qualities. I just don't remember there being anything where I felt like he redeemed himself for me. Like I didn't finish the book and be like, okay, he's changed. He's a different person now and has made him better. I can like him a little bit. Like I don't remember ever feeling like that. So I think that's all I really have to say about the movie. I enjoyed myself. I thought it was a good adaptation. Uh, let me know down below what you think. And thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will talk to you guys really soon. Bye. The Fifty Shades of Grey the thing. These bracelets are making my wrist really itchy. Look what my cat did. Isn't he a little like brat? He and I are not friends. <laughs> He's like, this is my playroom. I'm like, it's the Red Room of Pain. Had I taken like one look at that room, I would have been like, these are itching my wrists so bad. It always takes more than one try to get this down right. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dakota Johnson, Johnson, I the first one always sounds a little stupid, just a little, just a little.